Hello, welcome to Info Hub. In our headlines, Head of State invests Brazil's Defense Minister with the Cacique Crown of Honor. Canadian companies to collaborate with Guyanese businesses to develop oil and gas sector. And the Rupununi Music Festival is set for next weekend. Stay tuned for the details of these and more. The future of Guyana has never looked better. Our nation is on the cusp of a development program like never seen before. While Guyana is now emerging as an energy giant through the discovery of massive reserves of oil and natural gas, it is your government's intention that the huge benefits emerging from this will go where it matters most, to you, the people of this beloved country. There is a surge of confidence in the way Guyana is governed once again, and the level of investor interest is unprecedented. Guyana is poised to become the breadbasket of the region, and the pace at which this nation will grow through prudent fiscal management will be nothing short of impressive. But more than anything else will be the way every Guyanese, regardless of color, class or creed, becomes a part of this historic period of national transformation, sharing in the wealth and well-being of it all as one Guyana. And now for the details, President David Granger today awarded Brazil's Defense Minister Raul Youngman with the Cacique Crown of Honor. The top Brazilian government official is heading a delegation here on a state visit. Here's our first report from Crystal Stahl. The president said the national award is symbolic of Brazil's contribution and support to Guyana's military over the years through diplomatic relations. This award recognizes not only your personal diligence, but also your nation's demonstrated commitment, commitment to the preservation of South America and the Caribbean as a zone of peace. Today's award of the Cacique's Crown of Honor symbolizes our high regard for you and also the acknowledgement of the successful defense cooperation which has existed between Guyana and Brazil for nearly 50 years. The president also added that the Brazilian nation's commitment to preservation of international law, humanitarian and disaster relief, and consolidated defense cooperation between the two countries is noted in the bestowing of this award. The Minister of Defense of the Federative Republic of Brazil was welcomed as an honorary member to the Orders of Service in Guyana by senior ministers of government, including Minister of State Joseph Harmon and Minister of Foreign Affairs Carl Gunage, along with Justice Yannick Cummins Edwards. Crystal Stahl for InfoHub. The Canadian Development Bank is working to help Ghana overcome project implementation challenges. Paul McAdam has the details. The CDB's Director of Projects, Daniel Best, told InfoHub that in executing projects, Ghana faces similar implementation challenges to that faced by other countries within the region. First, um, through procurement, we are undertaking a number of procurement reforms, working closely with our countries to look at in-country procurement systems. Mm -hmm. What we want to do, and, and this is a move within the development community, is to move closer to national procurement systems, ensuring that countries' procurement systems are, are, are open, transparent, fair, and robust enough that as development financing institutions, they can use their system because they would be aligned with our harmonized procurement system. He added that the Caribbean Development Bank will push to have all stakeholders upskilled upskill our public servants, upskill our engineers and, and all the persons who do evaluations in country to ensure that the, the procurement process can happen um, more seamlessly. And then as a bank, we also need to look at, at, at how we deal with this matter of, of implementation. And that's something that we are taking a really hard look at uh, coming on to the end of 2017. We did and, and we will be taking an even harder look at that in 2018. Given particular emphasis, of course, the, the supervision effort of the bank. Best added that the bank will take a more hands-on approach going forward. If you're assigned, for instance, to Guyana to supervise that project, um, you will now have more time to focus on supervision. Now, consider the benefits of this. You already have the project coordinator in country. You would also have engineering consultants in country. Um, 
if we now are able to create the space for the CDB officer to provide, for want of a better term, more hand-holding, to walk the project coordinator through our processes, to guide them through the evaluation process, we can get to starting construction works much faster. And, and therein is, is the challenge that we are intent on grappling with and, and resolving in, in the years ahead. From the CDB's headquarters in St. Michael, Barbados, Paul McCallum for InfoHub. Zanil Williams tells us that over 20 Canadian organizations experienced in the oil and gas sector currently in Guyana for the GPEX meeting are in collaboration talks with local businesses to develop the oil and gas sector. Last evening, at a function hosted by the Canadian High Commissioner, Lillian Chatterjee, the ambassador noted that the companies here are quite eager to share knowledge with local businesses. Canada is one of the world's principal energy producers with some of the world's largest energy reserves, an industry that supports more than 500,000 direct and indirect jobs. Canada, with decades of experience and lots of learning in the petroleum industry, can now boast world-class expertise in, in exploration and production and its supply chain. ENP method, construction, operation, monitoring of pipelines, optimization software, and other computer applications are among some of the areas that the Canadian businesses are skilled in. One of these new founded collaboration is Guyana Strategic Services, a merger between local public relations firm Saga City Media and Canadian consultancy the Cairo Cahau Group. If you need to make connections, if you want to know about trade, if you want to know about Guyana and the oil and gas industry, we offer those services. We're going to, we're going to take the, the oil and gas industry by storm. A memorandum of understanding was also signed between the Learning Corps International from Nova Scotia and School of the Nations Guyana. The High Commissioner urged Guyanese companies to develop their manpower in order to benefit from the opportunities that will be made available. Local businesses must continue to enhance their relevance to support the new industries that will emerge and to meet the demands of the future economy. Local businesses need to step up. Zanil Williams for Info Hub. With some 54 years of service to Ghana and the rest of the world, India celebrated its anniversary of the Indian Technical and Economic Corporation with a simple ceremony held at the Agman Indian Restaurant. Alexis Rodney was there and filed this report. The Technical Economic Corporation ITEC program was initiated by the Indian government and has several components. These include training in the fields of hydrology, engineering, cyber technology, management, education and agriculture, among others. Over 500 Guyanese have so far benefited from the program. Speaking on behalf of Public Service Minister Dr. Rupert Rupnwright, Permanent Secretary Reginald Brotherson said the ITEC program is well in place to help in the development of Guyana's human capital. Human capital can be increased by education and training. And ITEC is an instrumental in allowing us to enhance our human resource development. Brotherson underscored the critical role played by the Public Service Ministry in ensuring that training and developmental plans are actualized when offered by the Indian High Commission. He noted that there are 35 areas allotted to Ghana that are utilized by officers of some 30 public service agencies. Indian High Commissioner Dr. Venkatila Mahalingam reminded that the ITEC program is just one of many collaborations his country has with Ghana. Guyana is an important partner for India in the area of development, partnership cooperation, and our cooperation with Guyana is purely driven by Guyana's requirements and, and its priorities. We may proudly say that more than 500 Guyanese have been trained under ITEC scheme. Under the ITEC program, India has partnered with countries including Guyana, St. Kitts and Nevis, Suriname, Venezuela, Brazil, and Chile, among others. It offers over 280 courses in 47 institutions in India in a diverse range of areas. Alexis Rodney for InfoHub. Boxton and Little Bayabu farmers received immense benefits following the implementation of the Black Sigatoka Management Program. Stefan Gabriel has more. At a visit today to both communities, Region 4 Crop Extension Assistant Malika Russell gave InfoHub some insight into the project. The project would have started in the month of March last year and um, 
With the project, we've employed several agricultural practices that the farmer has been following, and we have seen positive results in that. We haven't had any occurrence of the black cigatoka disease because he has been putting those practices into place, and um, his work together with ours has made the project more than just a success. The project entails the provision of planting materials, chemicals, and technical advice to farmers by National Agriculture Research and Extension Institute, NARI, District Crop Extension Officer, Nariangdat Haridat. Management of Daxicatuga disease entails three basic aspects. You look at one, the plant nutrition, two, you look at sanitation, and three, you look at spraying, the use of fungicides. Now what we are doing here is that we are incorporating all three. We are looking at the good nutrition where we fertilize regularly. We are looking at sanitation as you can see the plot is very clean and thirdly we are adhering to a strict spraying regimen using the various fungicide, the right rates and at the right intervals. Buxton farmer Lyndon Talbot said he welcomed the program. Actually the project is a good project for me in the sense that um, I'm farming for most of my life. But then um, with the help uh, um, the Nari team, the, the team, you know what I mean, I was able to boost the plantings. Nari is actively engaged in adaptive research that focuses on improving crop production and productivity for enhanced food security and rural development. For InfoHub, Stefan Gabriel. Director of Culture Tamika Boatswain today announced the inclusion of the Neil Chan Prize for Creativity and Pageantry as part of the King of the Band competition at this year's MASH Night event. Mrs. Sheila Chan, widow of Neil Chan, former costume designer and MASH Romani MASH Day and MASH Night convener, has donated the special prize. This trophy will be donated yearly as part of the King of the Band competition. Neil Chan, who died on January 5, 2018, won King of the Band at the MASH Romani MASH Night competitions in the 80s and 90s on many occasions with portrayals of different themes over the years. Chan's costumes dominated the Mashramani scene with presentations that can be described as a masterful blend of costume design and well choreographed pageantry. The Neil Chan Foundation intends to work with the Department of Culture to develop the local festival arts by providing training for young designers to enhance the standard and quality of Mashramani. The third annual Rupununi Music and Arts Festival was officially launched today at the Colgrain House, Camp Street. The event, slated for February 16 to 18 at the Monari Ranch in Lethem, promises to be a memorable one. Crystal joins us again with our final report. The festival's director, Barbara Mdani, said the weekend's event will include a range of activities and a number of performances by both local and international creative arts groups. During the day, we wish to create space between 10 to 4 so that visitors to the festival can leave the festival if they choose to and visit the neighborhood and other sites and places of interest that exist within the Rupununi. But for those who are staying on site all day long, between 10 and 4, we'd have music and art and reading workshops so that people are engaged all the time. Minister of Telecommunication Catherine Hughes encouraged all to get involved in what she described as a wonderful event. I have had personal experience of um, enjoying the festival, being there over a three-day period. And really it is a moving experience because it's not just music, which is a powerful unifying role in any country, in any part of the world. But the fact is that this is music with depth, that it allows you to experience a culture. So I say to um, any family, I say to any Guyanese, this is a wonderful opportunity. Permanent Secretary of the Indigenous Peoples Affairs, Alfred King, said the ministry is in full support of the festival, especially since it will promote hinterland development. Early in the day, Minister of Indigenous Peoples Affairs Sidney Alicock handed over a check of $5 million to the director of the festival to help offset some of the costs. Crystal Stahl for InfoHub. Please be reminded to schedule an appointment for your annual eye examination since routine visits to your optometrist can preserve your vision 
over the long term. Thanks for watching. Remember to connect with us 24 7 on our website and social media. Goodbye.